looking at one of the very important area which is present in the anterior aspect of thigh and this region is known as femoral triangle. When we are defining this femoral triangle, we need to identify this iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine, pubic bone and pubic tubercle. Along with that, we should be able to identify sartorius muscle and we should be able to identify the adductor longus muscle. So, if we see, this is like a triangle and the base is formed by the structure which extends from my anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. This whitish gray structure is the inguinal ligament that makes the base of my femoral triangle. Then if I come laterally, what I can see here, the sartorius muscle is making the lateral boundary of my femoral triangle. And medially, we can see this muscle, the adductor longus muscle that makes the medial boundary. And the apex where this sartorius and adductor longus, they intersect each other, that makes the apex. So this is my base, this is apex. That's the lateral boundary and this is the medial boundary. Okay, so now we'll be looking at the structures who makes the floor of my femoral triangle. So the structures who are contributing to the floor of femoral triangle from medial to lateral, these structures are pectineus muscle, iliosos tendon. So far so, we have talked about the boundaries, we have talked about the floor. Now who makes the roof of this triangle? This triangle is roofed by skin, superficial fascia and the deep fascia of the thigh. And then we are going down to the contents of this triangle and if you see within the femoral triangle, we can see the femoral nerve, femoral artery and femoral vein. Now how they are organized? These structures, the femoral artery and femoral vein, they are wrapped in a facial sleeve that is called femoral sheet. But the nerve is not enclosed within this femoral sheet. It is lying outside of this femoral sheet. And each vessel, the femoral artery, femoral vein, they have their own compartment. And the most medially, there is an empty canal. And this canal lodges a lymph node. That is called lymph node of colocoid. I can tell you an easy way how to memorize these contents who are organized within this triangle. There's a mnemonic. We can learn it. Neville. N A V E L. Let's fit it here. N goes for the nerve. Which nerve? Femoral nerve. A goes for artery. And then V goes for a vein. And E goes for an empty canal. And the L goes for this empty canal have a lymph node and that lymph node is given the name of lymph node of colocoid. These, this facial sling, which we call it as femoral sheet, it has compartments. So artery lives in, in its own compartment, vein lives in its own compartment and the canal, femoral canal has its own compartment. Now, what is the clinical significance? of this femoral triangle. Why we are emphasizing a lot on this point. This femoral triangle can be used as landmark for recording the femoral pulse, which we can very easily localize in a living individual if we can feel for anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle midway, we can isolate the femoral pulse. Furthermore, for various catheterization procedures, we can have a good access to the artery as well as to the vein. 
and we use this vascular access point for cardiac or vascular catheterization and last but not the least the femoral canal which is closed in the normal individuals but in in case of women most likely where they have increase in intra abdominal pressure during the process of childbirth there is fair enough chance that this canal can be breached and the femor the content of the abdominal cavity can protrude from one cavity to another cavity and giving us through an opening which is abnormal to it and giving us a hernia and which this hernia is called femoral hernia because it is coming into the femoral triangle 